I'm Jasmine. I'm the worship director at The Heart. I'm Amanda. I serve on the ministry leadership team at The Heart. I would love for you guys to articulate how, for Christians in a post Roe v. Wade America, how the issues related to abortion can be a little complicated to navigate. I think this issue is really complicated because most people bring a personal story to the issue, uh, a relationship they've had. Um, maybe they've had an experience with abortion in their past. You might be a, a woman uh, or a family that has experienced a miscarriage and kind of wondered if that life even mattered based on the discourse that's happening in our country. And, and so I think people come burdened with a lot of their own highly intensely emotional experiences to the issue. That's how I would start. I have other thoughts, but Jasmine, you go. With the main concern being like, how are we compassionate in this space while also upholding biblical ideals? And then what does that look like? Because it doesn't just stop at abortion. It's not an issue that can be self-contained. And so how are you compassionate in that space first? How do you love first? And then what does that look like? practically like on an individual level, but then also like on a systemic level. Yeah. I like Jasmine, how you say it's an issue that can't be contained because I think part of the other, com the, the complexity of this issue is that it's, it's tied up with so many other issues in our life. Um, it has to do with how we think about anthropology, like what is a human, what makes something a human, who gets to determine what a human is. It has issues surrounding um, sexuality, how we approach um, the act of intimacy and, and its implications. It, um, it kind of touches on the um, inequality or the perceived inequality between men and women and the responsibility of, of women in the act of procreation is just falling so heavily on them and feeling like unfairly it gets to be bypassed by men. And so there's kind of this question of who owns the issue, who's allowed to talk about the issue, who's allowed to have an opinion on the issue. Um, there's just so many other philosophical, theological um, sociological, anthropological issues that go into this one singular topic. And so it's hard to have a conversation about just this. Like if you're going to have a conversation about this, you also have to have a conversation about, um, you know, anthropology, about sexuality, about theology, about the society, about men's and women's roles. And, and all of that, I think, just makes the, the conversation so heavy and so dense. And so, again, emotionally um, laden. The tendency of, of Christians should be to humanize everything. And, and what we mean by that is that everybody being born in the image of God, sometimes these things become uh, political talking points on either side of the issue where one of the parties are dehumanized or we intend to dehumanize the other side of the uh, of the pole. So how can we humanize this conversation? It's going to inherently involve compassion and and lis listening and and understanding to 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 embrace the complexity is to admit the humanity of both uh, the unborn and the mother. And uh, and to see that in a holistic way is it's going to cost us something to show up well for those in need, uh, regardless of, of where they are in or out of the womb. Even going off that, it raises like issues that stem from, OK, if you're going to be pro-life, what does that mean? And then like, is there a cap on that, <laughs> you know? And so what does that look like in foster care? What does that look like in adoption? What does that mean for harm reduction? What does that mean for pay equality? Like it, there's so many things that branch off when you're like, this is what I believe. And then how do you act on it in a way that is holistic? Preach, preach. When this secular world, I guess, talks about issues of, of life, of birth of conception of procreation they use a lot of scientific terms to kind of get to a definition of life like we'd love to go to the bible and get a scientific 
uh, explanation of when and how life begins, but it's a pre-modern book. Like it was, it was written before so many of the, the scientific um, kind of innovations that allow us to know the moment of conception and fetal, fetal heart rate and um, age of viability, all of these things. Instead from scripture, what we get is these like set of values that all coalesce to give us the value of life, the value of the image of God, both of the mother and of the child and a, a high view of the act of sexual intimacy, uh, a high view of, of, you know, life being knit in your mother's womb, like it's image bearing quality um, of the unborn child. And so we, we bring all those pieces together, but because maybe that specificity of scientific language in the Bible, it means that we're kind of talking like this with culture uh, in a way that I think also complicates things a little bit, you know? Yeah. Tied up in this issue is not only science and medicine, but law and our relationship to, to the legal system and, um, political powers and, and, uh, you know, there's so many different elements, science, all the way to politics that, that touch this issue that create spaces of disagreement or misunderstanding and to be able to have a, a, an open conversation that's patient enough to define terms and patient enough to sit with some mystery. Uh, that's, that's not the, the discourse out there, in the the land of broken talks, if you will. Um, so hopefully, this table talk will be a space where we can slow down and and ask and probe and and sit with some misunderstandings or disagreement, define our terms, and to to dialogue with a panel and uh, be able to have an open space of of story and of question asking and, and listening. And I think that that space itself, I I would hope, would be healing to be able to show up to issues that could be as viscerally charged, emotionally charged as this one and be able to walk away and say, uh, I think I understand um, someone else a little bit more. Um, I think that would be a good, a good thing to come from, from this kind of space. I hang out occasionally on social media. Like I follow news stories. I follow people's opinions of news stories and I have never been so scared to have an opinion on something as I was this summer when all of this was transpiring because on both sides of the issue, there is such deeply entrenched sense of virtue that what I think is the right thing and and what you think isn't just off or unwise, it's evil, it's evil. And so I think like if nothing else, if we can kind of, bridge that gap with curiosity of the other side. Like, let, let me just understand where you're coming from. Let me just understand where these values come from and what's informed them. And then, yeah, just take on a disposition of compassion. And um, we can say that we disagree wholeheartedly while also maintaining compassion and at least an informed awareness of why people believe what they believe. And that's going to really help our discourse, I think. And so what I want is I just, I just want there to be one space in the world where you don't have to be afraid to have your opinion on this issue and let's talk and let's learn. And yeah, we might, there might be some real uh, attempt at persuasion and that's okay, but at least those attempts are going to be made in in love and in, in questions and in a desire to know you better and a desire to um, serve you where you are and all of those things. That's, that's what I want for this table talk. Preach, preach. I need to assemble this team for every promo. (laughs) (laughs) This is awesome. (laughs) When we talk about the value of life, we're seeing through a biblical lens, right? And that's why we believe that, uh, child is not just a clump of cells. Um, We believe that God sees us in the womb, that he knits us together, and that life is precious and valuable. And so our mindset shouldn't change after that child is born. Um, If we are honoring the Imago Dei, that is from conception to death and even afterward. Um, And so what does that look like practically when we want 
you know, life to continue and for biblical standards to be upheld. We are told to care for the orphan and the widow. We're told to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so what does that look like if we want to change laws, if we want to get involved systematically? We are called to serve in those areas. We are called to walk alongside mothers who may not have support, mothers who may be in an awful situation. We're called to walk aside young couples who this is an accident, but if we are pushing for them to have this child, like, and they have nowhere to go, we are called to be that compassionate hand. We are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And then going forward, there are things that we can't do anything about But we can foster, we can adopt, we can support agencies if we don't feel like we're able to do that ourselves. We can support families who are making that jump. And then again, if we want children to be born into situations that are not ideal, are we pushing for wage equality so that those children can have a life where they are being fed and taken care of? Are we pushing for mental health services for parents who may be overwhelmed, for children who are coming out of situations that are not ideal. I think that it doesn't stop after we decide, okay, this life is sacred. How do you act on that? How do you serve on that? How do you show that your heart is with that person, with people? If you want people to be born, (laughs) you have to be willing to come alongside them in a Christ-like way. Um, and that's my, that's my spiel. <laughs> I, I was muted, but I was literally going, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> like the whole time. It's probably better that I was muted. <laughs> I really think people are actually trying to vehemently advocate for the image of God, but they mm-hmm. select a demographic to get behind, mm-hmm. you know, it's mm-hmm. either, the, either the unborn or the mom and, um, yeah. But, but I really think that, that there's something God honoring and wanting to come and say, I'm advocating for you, you know, um, and yeah. I'll show up and I'll fight tooth and nail for you. Like, that's like, yeah. God's like pursuing love. Right. But mm-hmm. it's like fragmented to where we have to divide it between different groups of humans instead of saying it's all, it's, it's, it's for humanity, you know? Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. We're not going to figure out how to reach the culture with this message of life if we're not understanding all of the the accompanying issues all of the reasons people have come to the conclusions they've come to like the complexity of it like if we don't understand it if we're just so eager to categorize and shut down and vanquish then we're just we're not going to understand and we're not going to be able to reach people it is kind of like i do want it to get somewhere but i just don't think we're ever going to get anywhere if there's not mutual understanding about where we're coming yeah. from and yeah. you can be you can you can cultivate compassion for the person that you like deeply deeply disagree with <laughs>